Hello and welcome to the first day of our parametric equations unit. Uh, to, first, we need to figure out what parametric equations even look like. Now, a parametric equations, uh, we're introducing a third variable t. So x equals t, 4t plus 3, y equals absolute value of t minus 1, is just one, one graph that comes from it. So if I want to see what that looks like on my graph, I fill in these t values. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, plus 3 is negative 5. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, plus 3, negative 1. And we can continue to do that. 0 plus 3 is 3, and then it would be 7, and then 11. Now if we do this for y, we would get an absolute value of negative 2 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. That would be 1 minus 1, which is 0, 0 minus 1, which is negative 1, 1 minus 1, which is 0, and then finally 2 minus 1, which is 1. Now to graph this, we don't graph the t at all. We just graph the x and y like normal. Now the x goes from negative 5 to 11. Let's scale these by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, 2, 4, 6. And now our y's just go from 1 to negative 1. So we can scale that from 1 to negative 1. Now I'll graph this in red. Negative 5, 1 would be there, negative 1, 0 would be there, Ooh, yeah. 3, negative 1 will be down there, 7, 0, and finally 11, 1. Now if I connected this, this would be an absolute value function, leaving that spot which was what, 3, negative 1. Now, what parametric functions do is they give us a time, which is our t variable, at which our function as, is at a particular point. Think of it as if a police come into a crime scene and there is a wonderfully drawn safe over in the corner, and uh, there's all these footprints. They have no idea when the thief uh, or when these footprints walk by the safe. If, uh, if these footprints had a t variable to see when they walked by, the police would have a better idea which footprints were the thieves. All right, now uh, let's graph this on your calculator. All right, I took out my calculator, and now if I want to uh, graph this, I go to mode. Let's make sure your calculator mode looks exactly like mine, where it's parametric and degree. Now if we hit y equals, our, you probably don't have anything in your calculator here, but if you do, you might want to clear it out so we're not too confused with what our graph looks like. All right. Now I'm going to type in 4t plus 3, and the t button is the same button we used for our variables before. Our y, we're going to do absolute value, which is math. To the right, enter, absolute value of t minus 1. Oh, I put 11 in there. Let's delete that out. All right, so let's hit zoom standard for a second. Now this wasn't the same graph that we had before. It just has this little section on it. That's because our t values are too small to uh, to notice this. So what we have to do is we have to look at our t values. Go back in, and it looks like our t values are from neg from zero to 360. Let's turn this from say negative 10 to 10. And our t step is how much we go up by each time. Let's go up by 0.1. Now if we graph this, it will show us the entire graph. 
All right, so now there's another part of this question that says how much time elapsed between 23.4 and 43.9. All right, let's, uh, there's a couple ways we can look do this. Let's look at the table. Between 23.4, so let's go to where my x is 23. Actually, this 43.9 is the closest one where I'm at, 43.9. The t is 10. So 10 minus, looks like when t is 5, it's 23.4. So 10 minus 5, there's 5 seconds between 23.4 and 43.9. Now, let's change our calculator. So now our function is t, and this is going to be t squared. Now, if we just graph this, it's going to be a parabola, just the y equals x squared graph. Now, let's change it so the x is, just gives you the values between negative 1 and 2. Now, since x equals t, we can also say that the t value is between negative 1 and 2, and that will restrict our domain to just graphing those values. Now we want to see how we make different translations, horizontal translations, vertical translations, horizontal translate, horizontal dilations, which are stretches and shrinks, vertical stretches and shrinks, and reflections over the x and y. So if you were in class, I would give you five to 10 minutes with your group to explore this. So if you'd like, pause the video and do this on your own. All right, to give this the answers to you, if I want to move to the right, 3, I'll just push plus 3 in the x. And that moved it to the right 3. So if I wanted to move it down 1, subtract 1 on the y, so now I moved it to the right 3 and down 1. Now if I did t minus 3, that would move it to the left. t squared plus 1, that would move it up 1. So that's how I do my horizontal and vertical translations. Horizontal is with the x, and vertical is with the y. Now if I want to do dilations, so I'll get rid of these values to get my original again. Dilations, if I want to stretch it, all right, for our horizontal translations, I'm going to insert a 2 in front of that, and you'll watch how this stretches horizontally. So if there's a 2 there, it'll stretch horizontally. If I inserted a point 2, then it's going to shrink horizontally. So I'll delete that. And now if I want to do a vertical translation, uh, I don't need two points. If I say 0.2t squared, that shrinks it vertically. You can barely see it. But if I get rid of that point, you'll see it'll, sh it'll stretch it vertically. So these values, uh, we can stretch and shrink by putting some number in front of t or t squared. Now, reflections, we can do by push it, putting negatives in. So instead of 2, if I put a negative there, you can see that flips over the x. Now, if I delete that and insert a negative there, now it flips over the y. So if uh, so, depending where the negative is, it's going to either flip over the x or the y. All right. Now, if we want to make an equation of a half circle, the equation is normally x squared plus y squared equals our radius squared. So uh, to solve it for y, y squared equals 
r squared minus x squared. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of r squared plus or r squared minus x squared. All right, so this is a full circle. Uh, now, if I wanted to do half a circle, if I wanted the top, it would be plus this. If I wanted the bottom, it would be the negative of that. Now, if I wanted to do that in parametric, all I have to do is x equals t, y is equal to uh, square root of r squared minus x squared, or t squared, I should say, and that would give you the top half. If I put a negative there, that would give you the bottom half. All right, so given a table, let's try to find parametric equations. To go from 1 to 3, 2 to, or three, negative 3 to 1, negative 2 to 3, and so on all the way up, you can see this is increasing by a 2. So that's going to be 2t. The intercept is here, where it's 0, 7, so 2t plus 7. Now for y, to go from negative 3 to 10, negative 2 to 5, you're squaring this number. And if you square both these numbers, then you have to add 1 to get to those values. So t squared plus 1. Now if we wanted to write this using just x and y, uh, what we do is we solve for t and then plug that into the other value. So if I solve this one for t, I'd subtract 2 on both sides. So I have x minus 2 equals t. And now I plug this value in for t. So y is equal to 2, x minus 2 minus 3. Now I have it. Now I have to go a couple more steps in order to simplify it fully. So if I distribute over the parentheses, y is equal to 2, 2x minus 4 minus 3. y is equal to 2x minus 7. All right. Now, uh, think about this for a second. The t plus 2 moves it to the right 2. And now when we're writing it in this equation, I have x minus 2 which we learned in last chapter, also moves it to the right too. Now there's a lot of people that asked, how come um, in first chapter, the x minus 2 would always move it the opposite way that you would think it would? And the reason is, is because of parametric equations and we're solving for y. If we would have solved for x, then the y's are going to do the opposite of what we think that they should do. All right, if we take a look at this, let's convert this over. Uh, we add 4 to both sides, so x plus 4 is equal to t squared. We square root both sides, so we have plus or minus x plus 4 is equal to t. We throw it into our y equation. y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x plus 4 all over 2. Now if we think about this, this is a horizontal translation to left 4, and so is that. Um, and this is a vertical stretch by a factor 2, um, or vertical shrink, and so is that. All right, so let's, uh, let's find the parametric equations for this table and then write them in one equation. If, uh, what you should do at home is pause the video and then go through it. All right, so the formula would be x equals 2t, as those are going up by 2. y is equal to, this is going up by 3, so 3t, and the intercept is at negative 4. So these are our parametric equations. If I wanted to solve it, I would solve for t here, so t would equal 2 over x, and when I plug that in, y equals 3, 2 over x, Oh, x over 2, what am I doing? I knew something looked funny. Uh, x over 2, 3 times x over 2, minus 4. And there's not much we could do here. We could write 3x over 2, or 1.5x minus 4. All right, we have a word problem, and then we're done. 
A hot air balloon is rising at 15 feet per second and the wind is continuously blowing from the west at 24 feet per second. So we have two different things that are affected. The X is being affected by the wind blowing and the hot air balloon is rising at 15 feet per second. So if it's moving 24 feet per second uh, to the east from the west, uh, we would do 24T, because after one second it's 24, after two seconds it's 48, and so on. Now it's rising 15 feet per second, so that's 15T. So these are the parametric equations that model the situation. So I'll write those again just so we remember them. All right. Will the balloon clear the windmill that is 175 feet to the east and 95 feet tall? Well, first, let's see how long it will take to either hit or clear that windmill. So it's 175 will equal 24T. So I divide 175 by 24. I don't think this comes out to an even number, because if it was divided by 25, it would. So 7.29. So it takes 7.29 seconds? Yeah, seconds to get over there. So now to see how, t how high it is, to see if we clear it or if we hit the windmill, we'll have to multiply 7.29 times 15. So multiply that times 15, and it's 109.375. Is that enough to go over the windmill? Yes, because the windmill is only 95 feet tall. All right, good luck with your homework.